Hello friends and fans of over the top Halloween decorating. Today we're gonna do some quick Halloween porch decorating before we get to the big main event, a spooky spider web tunnel that is going to be over the top outrageous. I'm going to walk you through the entire process start to finish and give you all of my tips. But just a quick warning, photo sensitive viewers will wanna skip the last part of this video because we are going all out with the strobe lights and fog machine. Let's get decorating. <laughs> We're getting started with our outdoor decorating with a cute fall porch setup. This was a good warm up for the big side yard spider web haunted walkthrough that you're going to see later. But here I took out and plugged in two jack o' lanterns, and the big one, which you'll see me add later on, is brand new. And that one is battery powered with a timer, which is really convenient. The ones that plug into the wall, we have hooked up to a smart switch, as well as this little slide projector that you're going to see later. Our house is a smart house for dumb people, I like to say, but all I have to do is instruct my Google to turn on the holiday lights and everything is lit up and in action. I hung up my fall wreath and put down the doormat, but unfortunately our front door has no clearance from the pavers, so I had to put it down on the step, but it still looks cute though. Next, I decorated the poor few plants that I can actually manage to keep alive with these little witch hats, which I got from Dollar Tree. I think it was a dollar for, well, in fact, I know it was a dollar for a pack of four or five. I wasn't quite sure what to do with them, maybe put them in food or something for the party, but I ended up adding them into my plants and I think that looked pretty cute. Now we've jumped on to nighttime when Sergio was able to have a chance to help me mallet down the stakes for my little light up ghosties in the grass. We've had these for quite a few years and they are from Walmart. He also helped with the cable management because if it was up to me, everything would just be thrown around and it would look absolutely terrible. He hooked everything up to the smart switch and he also has these boxes which we use for outdoor cable management. On Amazon they are called weatherproof indoor and outdoor power cord enclosures and they are extremely useful especially here in Florida where it is hot, humid, and wet at this time of year. We use the same ones at Christmas too when we put out our lights and inflatables. And the boxes are where we put the end of the extension cord where it splits into multiple outlets but we also use those green tubes, which I believe are called twist and seal cord protects. They do the same thing, but for single outlet extension cords, because even though they say they're outdoor extension cords, they will not hold up over time down here to rain water when they touch the prongs. So this is what it looked like so far on this night. And now we're moving on to the backyard. This is the area we are going to build our spider web haunted walkthrough for Halloween. The idea for this is for the kids to walk through the backyard and then we give them their candy and they can walk back through to leave. I have never done anything like this before, but I saw an inspiration picture online and I thought this would be the perfect year to give it a try. I like the idea of spiders because it's not bloody and gruesome, it's not too scary like zombies for the littles, and it is just the right balance of scary without being terrifying and confusing for small children. However, you will see at night that it is pretty scary once we get the strobe lights going and the smoke machine. I put the thing together and I knew what to expect, but I can imagine that kids who don't know what to expect will feel a good adrenaline rush walking through this thing once it's finished. If you see my other videos, you probably already know, but we bought this house a little bit over a year ago, so we finally have a sense of some permanence here. So it felt right to take on this over the top Halloween project while the kids are still young enough to enjoy it. Let me tell you a little bit about what we're using and what we're doing. Sergio and I did some research on what to use for the webbing because it is no secret that the cobwebs that they sell in the stores are a big pain. They're hard to dig down and they always leave a mess behind and they trap all kinds of living creatures. So we researched and we found this material called beef netting. We ordered a 10 pound roll of it from a beef supply company online. It was very reasonably priced and I feel like we ended up using a lot of it and it ended up being only half of the roll, even with all that we did and everything that you see. And because the beef netting is used for meat packing, it comes in a tube, so you have to cut the tube open. And then the idea is to stretch it taunt and cut the holes into it or make little marks into it to make it look more realistic like a spider web. 
As you can see, you can cut it with different materials to get different kinds of cuts. We tried razor blades, you can use pliers. What I ended up liking the most was good old fashioned scissors and that's what I went to to cut holes and then run the sharp side against the netting to make tears. The scissors were also the best way to cut the tube shape of the netting open. All the other things were such a pain. So get a good pair of sharp scissors if you attempt to do something like this. We used the beef netting as the base of our web tunnel and then I layered a few pieces against the fence using the stapler. For the top part, we really had to experiment because we weren't able to drill into our cement walls. So I ended up using four of those pre-drilled screws for our hurricane shutters to attach our webs to, but we needed more than just those four. So I ended up using some E6000 glue. I love that stuff, it's good for everything. To attach command hooks evenly-ish against the wall. I was worried they wouldn't be able to support the full weight once I got all the pieces up but I haven't had any issues and we've had some crazy thunder and wind and rainstorms this last week. I did have to let the glue dry for the command hooks overnight so you'll notice in the video that I end up finishing the webs the following day. The sticky tops on the back that came with the command hooks were not working but that glue is the ticket to getting them to stay up. Once we formed that base of the spider web tunnel with the beef netting, I then went in and used the spider webs you find in the stores for Halloween decorations to kind of add that extra dimension on top of the netting. The good thing about using it like this is it's much easier to take down and also we haven't gotten any creepy crawlies inside them yet because they are protected on the outside with the netting. And then I went in and added the spiders. I really wish that I had gotten more of the big spiders. They had a ton of them at the Dollar Tree when we went a month ago. But of course, when I went back, they were completely out of them. I was able to grab some packs of smallish spiders. Some of them connect with twisty ties that they came with and then other ones I connected just using zip ties. I'm really hoping that when we take all of this down, we'll be able to roll it up, put it in a bag or a box and store it for next year so it will be less work to put back up. I know the first time is always the hardest because you're not used to the space, you're trying to plan and see how to utilize it the best way. I would also love next year to add some bones, maybe some skeletons wrapped up in cobwebs and really up that creep factor. Those other little details that either I just couldn't find the materials this late in October or I just didn't have the budget to play with this year. But you can always start simple and just add on little by little with time. I wanted the full effect for the big reveal, so while I was waiting for night to fall to set up the lights and fog in the backyard, I hung up a small web light in the window. Sergio put up a cool doorbell eye. It makes spooky sounds and says, I'm watching you. I would play the audio for you, but it sounds really annoying coming from the camera microphone. I don't know why. Finally, it was night and time to finish up our spider web tunnel. I do want to warn any photo sensitive viewers that strobe lights are about to be used in full effect. Overall, I think I used at least 200 staples and it took a good two full days, but I love how it came out. Well, that is my spooky tunnel. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate you watching. I hope to see you next time here on It Came From A Vlog. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you're notified whenever we release new videos. Happy hauntings!